retail inflation or consumer price index based inflation fell to 7.04% in May from an 8 year high of 7.8% in April. The combined food inflation also came down to 7.97% in the month of May from 8.3% earlier. The inflation has come down primarily because of the base effect. Now what does it mean? This means that the base for calculating inflation last year was high enough so that the higher prices of goods and services in May of this year have not shown as much impact. It is the fifth consecutive month that the inflation rate has remained above 6% which is the upper end of the RBI's tolerance band. According to India's monetary policy framework, the medium term inflation target is 4% with a fluctuation of 2% which is allowed on either the upside or the downside. Now a lot of us can easily interpret what I'm talking about. These are comparisons of the figures in May with that of the same month last year. Let's start by understanding what inflation is, how the government measures inflation and what affects inflation the most in India. Inflation is nothing but a rate at which the prices of goods and services that you and I consume increase from one year to another in an economy. In India, inflation is measured through two indices. One is the consumer price index, which basically measures the prices of goods and services that we consume. And the other measure of inflation is through wholesale price index. Now, as the name suggests, this index considers the wholesale or the bulk prices of goods and commodities. First, I'm going to focus on the consumer price index as that is what the central bank or the Reserve Bank of India targets for the purpose of setting interest rates in the economy, thereby controlling the aggregate demand for goods and services. Now, under the current CPI or the consumer price index, around 300 items are considered for measurement. These are broadly classified under six heads, foods and beverages, pan, tobacco and intoxicants, clothing and footwear, housing, fuel and light and miscellaneous. Now under the food basket there are cereals, meat and fish, eggs, milk products, oils and fats, fruits, vegetables, pulses, you name it, any of the items that we consume is under this basket. Under the miscellaneous category there is health, transport, communication, education and personal care. What's important to note is that food and beverages have the highest weight in the index. The category's weight is 45.86% or almost 46% in CPI. Therefore, any big changes in the food basket will have a direct replication on the headline inflation number. This is followed by housing prices which have a weight of 10% in the index and fuel and electricity that have a weight of almost 7%. Therefore, as long as food prices continue to remain high, the headline inflation or the CPI inflation will not come down. The RBI in their last monetary policy statement said that the food basket is responsible for 75% of the increase in the inflation projections. The CPI is calculated with reference to a base year which is used as a benchmark. The price change pertains to that year. So when you calculate the CPI, the price of the basket in one year has to be first divided with the price of the market basket of the base year, then it is multiplied by 100. In our case, the base year that we take for our calculations is 2012. The CPI inflation can be further used to compute the cost of living and it also provides the insights as to how much a consumer can spend to be on par with the price changes. Now the other measure of inflation is through the wholesale price index. Just like the CPI, the WPI has three major components. Primary articles, which has food articles like your cereals, pulses, vegetables, fruits, eggs, milk. Primary articles also include crude, natural gas and minerals. The second component is fuel and power, which includes price changes in liquefied petroleum gas, petrol and diesel. And the third component is manufactured products. Now, price changes in manufactured products include prices of apparels, textile, tobacco products, paper and paper products, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, among other things. The difference between the CPI and the WPI is also in their weights. While the majority of CPI is tilted towards food prices, the WPI is tilted more towards manufactured products, which have a weight of around 64% in the index. Therefore, if the prices of manufactured products rise, it has a large bearing on the WPI. 
The other main difference is that the CPI captures changes in price for various uh, services in the economy while WPI does not. For more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter.